Hello, sorry, I just had to unmute myself. Hello and welcome to day 20 of the 21 day challenge. I can't believe we're nearly here or there. <laughs> um, so day 20 of the 21 day Ashtanga Yoga Challenge. We have now learned all of the positions for the Ashtanga Primary Series. And I wanted to talk about the fact that the primary series of Ashtanga is actually very challenging and it's a very dynamic practice. And it's quite long in time. And every day we might not be able to do a full primary series. Other days we just may not feel up for it. So today's class in preparation for the full primary series tomorrow, I am gonna show you a practice that has all the modified versions for the primary series. And this um, would be really beneficial, perhaps for those that find the full primary a little bit challenging still. I mean, even I find it challenging. This is why sometimes I will practice in this manner. Um, and if I just give you an example of why I think this is important, for example, I have just been for a run. And so I can recognize that my hips have gone really tight, my knees are a little bit sensitive, and maybe my ankles. So for the primary series, there are a lot of deep external hip rotators, rotations, um, and they might not suit the body for today. Also, Ashtanga primary series tends to um, bring in a lot of people that are go, go, go. They like the intensity, they like dynamic practices, they like um, strong movements. And if we think about yoga on a whole, it's all about balance and creating like an equi equilibrium. So for every dynamic practice we do, Perhaps we need to think about doing a more of a restorative style to balance out um, our behaviours, our way of moving, etc. So we will do the full primary series today, but it's going to be modified. So taking blocks and belts and maybe not going as deep into poses today. So let's get going. Let's see what happens. The things that we really want to remember as we step to the front of our mat, the feet, feet are hit together, heels slightly apart. The priority of the practice is the breath. Essentially, we do these rhythmic repeated sequences so that we don't have to begin to consciously think about the movements and we can move into the unconscious and allow the breath to take over. So whatever you're doing, however dynamic or restorative, you want to include that beautiful breath. And it allows us to eventually move into a moving meditation, which can be so beneficial for the nervous system, the mind and the physical body. So we will start with our five A's and three B's, but we're gonna modify it all today. Take the hands beside the body. Lift the sternum, close the eyes, begin to engage Ujjayi breathing. We'll start the practice with an OM today. The OM signifies um, a cleansing of the energetic space around us, also brings us back towards ourselves and it's the sound of the universal consciousness taking the hands to prayer thumbs lightly pressing against the sternum inhale here oh. exhale release the hands inhale ujjayi breathing Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise to flat back. Exhale, step to plank. Drop the knees, engage the glutes as you lower down. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Knees are bent, heels lifted. One, we're going to take three breaths. Two. Three. 
Inhale, step through, rise to flat back. Rise to fingertips. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise to standing, lift the arms, look up. Exhale, Samasthiti, hands by the side. Four more of those. Akam, inhale, lift the arms, look up. Due, exhale, forward fold. Softness in the knees. Trini, inhale, rise to fingertips, flat back. Chatwari, step to plank. Drop the knees, straight line, the elbows tight to torso, lower down. Punch it, inhale, upward facing. Shut, exhale, downward facing. One. Two. Three. Sup the inhale, step through, rise to flat back. Come to fingertips. Ashtar, exhale, forward fold. Now I inhale, rise to standing, lift the arms, look up. Exhale, hands to side, three more. Akam, inhale, lengthen, look up. Due, exhale, forward fold. Trini, inhale, rise to flat back. Chatwari, step the other foot back, drop the knees. Lower to the ground. Punch it, inhale, upward facing. We can still contract the glutes. Think about the body, exhale, downward facing. One, drishti or gaze point between the thighs or up to navel. Two. Three. So my dominant side is my right side, so I'm going to inhale, step the left foot and then the right to the flat back. Asha, exhale, forward fold. Noah, inhale, rise to standing. Exhale, hands to side, two more. Akam, inhale, lift the arms. Due, exhale, forward fold. Relaxing the neck. Trini, inhale, rise to flat back. Chatwari, step the other leg back. And then down, drop the knees. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. So we're very gently, one, beginning to work into the back of the body. Two, posterior chain. Three. Sup the inhale, rise to flat back. Ashdow, exhale, forward fold. Noah, inhale, rise to standing. Exhale, hands to side. Last one, Akam, inhale. Due, exhale. Trini, inhale, flat back. Chatwari, step to plank. Drop the knees, take the pressure out the shoulders as you lower down. Punch it, inhale, upward facing. Shut, exhale, downward facing. Three breaths for one. Now, a more restorative style would be that you would drop the knees. Two, and rest in child's pose instead of downward dog. Three, it's your choice how much you want to bring it down. Ashtal, inhale, exhale, forward fold. Noah, inhale, rise to standing, lift the arms, look up. Exhale, hands to side. Sun salutation B. Three of these. A, come inhale, bend the knees, lift the arms, look up. Let's keep the hands shoulder width distance apart. Do a exhale, forward fold, maybe a softness in the knees. Trini, inhale, rise to flat back. Chatwari, step it back to your plank, drop the knees, lower the chest and then the chin. Panja, inhale, roll the shoulders back, widen through the collarbone. Exhale, downward facing dog. Supta, inhale, step the right foot through and drop the back knee. We can opt for a low lunge instead of our warrior one. Exhale, step back to plank, drop the knees again and lower down. Inhale, upward facing. Desha, exhale, downward facing dog. Ekadasha, left foot forward, drop the right knee, lift the arms, low lunge. Dwaydasha, exhale, step back and lower down. Triodasha, inhale. 
Chaturdasha, exhale, three breaths. One, two, three. Panchadisha, inhale, step through, rise to flat back, lift to fingers. Shodisha, exhale, forward fold. Saptadisha, bend the knees, lift the arms. Exhale to stand, two more. Akam, inhale, bend the knees, look up. The way, exhale, forward fold. Trini, inhale, rise to flat back. Chatwari, step to plank. Knees, chest, chin as you lower down. Pancha, inhale. Shat, exhale. Suck the right foot forward, low lunge, drop the back knee, inhale to lift the arms. Ashtar, exhale, step back and lower down. Now, even if you're proficient with the primary series, it's really important, I feel, inhale up and facing, exhale down and facing, to do these styles of practice. Step the left foot forward, drop the knee, lift the arms, just so that you can become aware of what it feels like to slow it down. Drop the knees, exhale. And begin to tune in with your body, inhale upward facing. Exhale downward facing, three breaths. And know what you can do so that you can continue to step on your mat despite how the body is feeling. Two, so if you're tired, still get on that mat. Three, and just take it a bit easier. Inhale, step it through, rise to flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees, lift the arms. Exhale to stand. Now, if you're feeling resistant, one more. Inhale, bend the knees, lift the arms, meaning that you want to push forward. Coming into the hardest variations, inhale, rise to flat back. I'd like you to ask yourself why. Drop the knees, chest and chin. Why do you always need to push to the end range of movements? Inhale, right foot forward, drop the back knee, lift the arms. Exhale, release. Step back and lower down. This is a gentle reminder that you are not defined. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. By how far you can get in a position or in a yoga practice. You're not gonna find enlightenment the harder you go into a pose. Drop the knees, chest, chin. How is your breathing? Inhale, upward facing. Can you keep that rhythmic pace? Down dog, three breaths for one. Two. And three. Inhale, step through, rise to flat back, exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees, lift the arms, Utkatasana. Exhale to stand, Samastitihi. Let's move into standing. Step the feet hip distance apart, hands to waist. Breathe in through the nose, we dry breathing. Exhale, forward fold. Slight bend in the knees today, wrapping peace fingers around the toes. Inhale, rise to flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Crown of the head lowers, elbows wide. One, gaze off the tip of your nose. Two. Three. Four, five, inhale, rise to flat back. Exhale, take the hands under feet, Padahastasana. Exhale, forward fold, five breaths. One, I like to think of it when I modify this practice. Two, that I'm giving myself a little bit of a break. Three, I'm still moving, I'm still doing it. Four, 
five, but I'm moving with that sense of compassion. Inhale, rise to flat back. Exhale, hands to waist. Inhale, rise to standing, and exhale, step the feet together, hands by the side. Uti to Trikonasana, I'm gonna take my block. Inhale, step the right foot back, turn to face the back of your mat, block is in the right hand, and as you exhale, reach forward, and then release the block to the inside of the front foot, and gaze to the left thumb. One. Good, it feels much more open for me, I can roll my chest. Two, up towards the ceiling. Three, keeping these lovely long lines through the side of the body. Four. And five. Inhale, rise to T, turn the right foot in, left foot out. Block comes to the left hand as you exhale, reach forward. Keep the length in that front leg. Release the block to the inside of the foot and gaze to the top right thumb. And you might find two, that you can really lengthen through that left leg now. Three. Four. Five. Inhale, rise to T, left foot in, right foot out. We're going for a revolved triangle. Paravita Trikonasana, square to the back of your mat. And let's take the block to the inside of the front foot. So, Depending on the height you choose, plant the hand and the lower and the right hand can stay on the lower back. One, and we're really focusing on opening the chest to the side. Two, straightening through the right leg, the head of the femur drawing back to the socket. Four, and five. As you breathe in, rise to your T. Right foot in, left foot faces the front. Draw the right hip forward. Releasing that block to the inside of the front foot and the right hand plants on top. Left hand to lower back. Now if you find that your front leg is still bending, lift the block higher. Take the left hand to lower back, look up for two. Three. And when I modify these poses, four, I find that my breath can run smoother through the body. Five. Inhale, rise to your T. Exhale, step forward, Samas Dtihi. Utita Pasva Kanasana, extended side angle. Inhale, step the right foot back, much longer stance, bend the knee 90 degrees, and rest the right elbow on top of the knee. This left hand can stay on the hip. Option two, lift up, and option three, send it over. One, if there's any shoulder issues, just take it up to the waist. Two. Three, maybe we can take the gaze up. Four. And five. Inhale, rise to T, right foot in, left foot out. Exhale, bend through the left knee. Elbow to knee and to waist, face reaching up or overhead for one. The main priority here is that the chest is open, lengthen the collarbone two, and maybe the gaze softly rolls up or is in neutral looking forward. Three. Four. Five. Inhale, rise to T, revolved extended side angle. Relax the arms, square the hips to the back of the mat, lift up off the back heel and drop the knee. Inhale, lift the left arm high, take it over to the outside of the knee. We're coming into that prayer position. Good. Contract the glutes a little bit to prevent that wobble and just work on taking the gaze behind you. For one, two, three, gently opening the body, four, and five. Inhale, take hands to heart center, tuck the back toe, lift, roll round, face the front of your mat, lift that back heel and drop the knee. Inhale, lift the right arm high, take it across, hands to prayer, take the gaze behind you, slight contraction of the glutes for one, two, 
three, four, five. Inhale, hands to heart center, tuck the toe, exhale, inhale, lift up. Exhale, step forward, Sanastitihi. Prasarita Padottanasana A to D. And I'll invite you to take your block and your belt for this one. Set the feet nice and wide, toes facing forward. As you breathe in, Prasarita A, lift the arm, shoulder height. Exhale, hands to waist. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, forward fold, hinge from the hips. Rest the head onto the block and release the hands to the floor, shoulder width distance apart. One, spread the fingers wide, draw the elbows in. Two, three, four. If your head is further lifted, further lifted, <laughs> five, higher up than the block, then you're welcome to take the block under the hands instead. Inhale, rise to flat back. Exhale, hands to waist. Inhale, rise to stand. Exhale, hands to side. Prasari to B. Inhale, lift the arms to T. Exhale, hands to waist. Inhale, roll shoulders and elbows back. Lift the chest. Exhale, forward fold. Taking the head to the block again. Tucking the chin, roll the shoulders and elbows back for one. Two. Three, four, five. Now engage your pelvic floor as you breathe in, rise all the way to standing. Exhale, release hands to side. Prasari to C, inhale, lift the arms. Find your belt, take it behind the back and take the hands shoulder width distance apart with the belt between the hands. Inhale, lift the chest. And as you exhale, forward fold. Maybe taking the head to the block and lifting the arms. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, release, take the block, the belt to the side. Prasari to D, inhale, hands to waist, lift the chest. Exhale, forward fold. From here, releasing the hands and wrapping them around the ankles would be the modified version, otherwise peace fingers to toes. Inhale, rise to flat back. Exhale, forward fold, drop the head down and lift the elbows. So if you always take the fingers around the toes, See what it feels like to hold the ankles. Two. Three. Four. And five. Inhale, rise to flat back. Exhale, hands to waist. Pelvic floor engaged as you inhale, rise to standing. Exhale, step forward, front of your mat, Samastitihi. Pause Vottamasana, taking the hands to reverse press. In modified version, taking each hand to each elbow. Set the right foot back and roll to face the back of your mat. Now step the uh, back foot wide and imagine you're on train tracks instead of a straight line. This is the modified version. Roll the right hip back, keep both legs straight and exhale forward fold. So maybe we only exhale forward fold a short distance, keeping the length in the spine, just tuck the chin for one. Eventually, or the final version is that knee to the shin, or knee to, uh, sorry, chin to shin. Three, four, five, Inhale, rise. Exhale, right foot in, left foot forward, facing the front of your mat, step the back foot wide. Inhale, lift, draw the left hip back, and as you exhale, forward fold. Maybe we don't go as low down. Two, just see how that feels. How, what muscles need to engage? Three, relax the toes. Try not to grip the toes. Four, and 
five, inhale, rise up, exhale, step forward, hands by the side. Now, for our standing balance pose, we, I'm gonna do um, one, instead of bending the knee up to the chest, and that being the modified version, I'm gonna use a wall here so that we work on the balance and the hamstring. So, what we're gonna do today is take the hands to the waist, we want a legs length distance from a wall. Hopefully you don't have mucky feet. And we're gonna inhale, lift the leg and press the sole of the foot against the wall. So we wanna be at a 90 degree angle. So if you can see yourself, just see how that feels. Good. And we're gonna stay here for one, two, lift the chest, three, Four, five. Now, if we think the next pose is taking the leg out to the side, we're gonna achieve this by your standing foot, your left foot is gonna turn out 45 degrees and we face the side. For one, gaze over the left shoulder, away from the wall. Two, three, Four, five. Inhale, turn that left foot forward once again, square over the hips. And now just point the toe, heel off the uh, wall. Two, good. Three, so this is a really nice way. Four, if you can't get the balance with the belt around the foot or taking peace fingers around the toe, but still getting to the hamstring, use the wall. Bend the knee, exhale, release. Straight onto the other side. Inhale, straighten the left leg, sole of foot to wall. Lift the chest for one. Two. Three. Four. Let's draw the lower belly in. And five. Right toes turn out 45 degrees, hands to waist and gaze away from the wall. One, two, so you might notice that my hips still a little closed. That's just my body shape. Three, I've got very deep internal rotation on the hips. Four, some of you will be able to turn that foot out further. Five, inhale. Turn the right toes in, square the hips, and then point the toe, lift the heel. One, two, three, four, five. Bend the knee, inhale, exhale, release. Ardha Bada, Padmottanasana, Padmottanasana variation, <clears throat> which would be our tree pose. Taking the knee out to the side, draw the sole of the foot up to the inside of the opposite thigh. Again, if you're near that wall, maybe if the balance isn't there, take the hand to the wall. Contract the glutes, lift the chest, hands to prayer. Let's try and find some stillness. Fixed gaze, draw the belly in for one, two, Three, four, five. Inhale, draw the knee up. Exhale, release straight onto the other side. So let's start with the heel of the foot dropping onto the opposite ankle. And remember, you can stay here. Option two, foot to calf. Option three, foot to inside of thigh. Press the foot against the thigh. Squeeze the glutes, lift the chest, hands to prayer. One, you take your variation. Two, the lower body really does need to be active to reduce the wobble. Three. Four. And five, inhale, lift the knee. Exhale, release. Good, step to the front of your mat, hands by the side. Surya Namaskara A. Inhale, lift the arms, look up. Exhale, forward fold. 
relax the neck. Inhale, rise to flat back. Maybe you feel a little bit more open now. Exhale, step to plank. Drop the knees, chest, chin, contract the glutes. Plunge your inhale, upward facing, roll the shoulders back and down. And exhale, downward facing dog. Warrior one, uh, Utkatasana. Inhale, look forward and set the feet to the front of your mat. Now bend your knees, squeeze the inner thighs together and lift the arms. Let's keep the arms shoulder width distance apart for one. Tuck the tailbone, draw the belly in, look up. Three. Four. And five. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise to your flat back, lift and lengthen. Exhale, step the other foot back and then to plank, drop the knees, chest, chin. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. Warrior one or low lunge, your choice. Stepping the right foot forward and dropping the back heel down. A modified version of this would be to keep the back heel lifted, but we do want to try and get into the internal rotation of the left hip by dropping the heel and then squaring the hips forward. Lift the arm, shoulder height, take the gaze forward or up for one. Two. So modified versions of warrior one would be that front knee is not as bent. Three, so you're not going as deep. Four. Five. Inhale, straighten the right leg, turn the toes in. Roll around, face the back of your mat, step that back foot wide and gently bend through the left knee for one. Warrior ones are often killers in this modern world after a weight session. Three, I know that feeling. Four. And five. So from here we move into warrior two. So we open the body to the side, reposition the back foot and drop the heel in. Left arm forward, right arm back. One. Two. Three, gaze over that left middle finger. Four. And five, inhale, straighten the left leg, turn the toes in. Roll the right toes forward and bend the right knee, gaze over the right middle finger. Two, and try and keep the arms lifted. Three, only three more breaths. Four, two more breaths, I can't count. <laughs> and Five, exhale, cartwheel the hands down, slide it back to plank, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. Drop to the knees, cross the shins and ankles and roll over. Straighten the legs out in front of you, Dandasana. Plant the hands, lift the chest, tuck the chin, lift the sternum, gaze to toes, one. Two, three, four, five. Bend the knees up, reach the hands forward, wrap the peace fingers around the toes. Inhale, rise to flat back. And as you exhale, wiggle the heels away from you. So inhale. Exhale, wiggle the heels away. Now find that point or that maximum range and the knees can stay a little bit bent. Otherwise, straighten the backs of the legs. Two more breaths, one. Gaze to the big toes. Two. Inhale, rise to flat back. Exhale, release. Take the hands behind you, bend the knees, feet hip distance apart. Option one or modified version is that you're just going to lift the chest and roll the shoulders back. But I like us to get into the glutes a little bit. If you've got any shoulder injuries, just stay here. Otherwise, you're going to inhale, lift up, squeeze the bum, try and get a line from the knee to the hip bone, hip bone to the shoulder. Keep the chin to chest, looking forward for two modified Paul Vottanasana, three, four, 
five. Exhale, release. Come all the way down, cross the ankles. See if you can reach forward, drop the uh, shins and knees down, uncross the feet, step to plank, knees, chest, chin. So if that isn't possible, inhale upward facing and exhale downward facing. I'll show you an option on the next round. Step through, straighten out the legs. Ardha Bada, Padma, Pachimottanasana. So this is the first external rotator of the hips. So we're going to really modify today. If there's injury there, you're just going to bend the knee and drop it out to the side. So I'll the foot against the inside of the thigh. If there's no injury, but we're just taking it easy today, I want you to lift up, keep equal distance against the inside and outside of the ankle, and take the foot just above the opposite knee. And now take the hands behind you, fingertips can face away, and just very gently bend the left knee, and we can stay here. One, so this is a softer hip opener. Two, that actually is still quite a fit, very efficient and quite full on. Three, so if we want to intensify, the left heel comes closer towards you. Four, and if we want to intensify again, the back is straight against the wall. The wall. Five, inhale, lengthen, exhale, release. Left knee bends, option to just drop it to the side. Otherwise, scoop the heel up, keep equal length through the inseam and the outer seam of the ankle, hands behind you, lift the chest. Very gently bend the right knee, lifting up, gaze forward for one, two, three, four, and five. Exhale, release, straighten the leg. Now, if crossing the ankles and rolling over the knees isn't possible, you're gonna bend both knees to the side, swing over onto the hip, and step back to tabletop. Lift the knees, drop the knees, exhale, lower down. Inhale, upward facing, so it's important that you get that plank position to start. Inhale, look forward, slide the feet through, come back into seated. Triangle Mukha variation. So for this one, I'm going to take two blocks and I'm going to wedge them under my left sit bone. I'll face forward for this. So I'm really nice and lifted on that left side. The legs come straight and then I bend and close the right knee, find the ankle and tuck it behind me. And this will relieve lots of pressure onto from the right ankle. If this is too much, Maybe you just have the knee towards the chest and we can stay lifted or gently take the hands to the side, forward fold, one. So this is still a lovely stretch. Two. Three, you can keep the hands on the lap if you prefer, four and stay upright. And five, inhale. So from here, gently bend the right knee and then lengthen. So I'm just going to slide the blocks under the right sit bone, lengthen the legs. Inhale, bend the left knee and then tuck it behind. So perhaps you have an old sprain in the ankle, exhale forward fold. Perhaps there is tenderness in the knee joint. This is ideal for you. The only thing I'd say about this is if you're hypermobile, just watch that right knee pressing too far below the ground. And if you've got another block or book, maybe take something underneath the back of the knee. Four. And five. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, release. Let's go through our modified vinyasa. So it's your choice where you want to go. Reaching forward, rolling over the knees or taking it back. Knees, chest, chin. Inhale, upward facing, and exhale, downward facing dog. Step through, straighten out the legs. Janu Shashasana family. Bend the right knee, drop it to the side, and bring the sole of the foot against the inside of the thigh. Equalize the hips at the back, left toe towards you. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, forward fold. Hands around the feet, if that's not possible, maybe bend the left knee, and the same process. Inhale. Exhale, uh, release the heel away. Inhale, exhale. Three. 
form. Five. Inhale, rise to flat back. Exhale, release, bend the right knee in. Lengthen, bend the left knee up. Take it to the side. Sacrum is neutral. Inhale, reach the arms. Exhale, forward fold. Janu Shishasana on the left side. One. Two. The right toes drawing back towards you. Three. Four. Five. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, release. Work through that vinyasa. Inhale, roll it through, step back. Knees, chest, chin. Try and get into the habit if you can. Inhale, upward facing of really working through these vinyasas, but in a modified way if the energy isn't there. Straighten the legs. Janushashasana B. So we come back into that A position with the foot running parallel under against the inside of the left leg. But instead of keeping the toes pointing down the inseam of the leg, which is the full version, we're gonna tuck the toes under. So they point, they stick out underneath the left bum cheek. And that, if that's too much on your knee joint, you're gonna stay in A. Inhale, lift, you can stay up nice and lifted. Otherwise, exhale, forward fold. One. two, and I really wanted to do this today, three, because wherever you go in the world, once we're allowed to go again, four, whenever you enter an Ashtanga studio or practice, inhale, rise to flat back, take the hands behind you, lift off of the heel and straighten the leg. You will be able to know what to expect. Close the left knee, exhale, drop it to the side. Come up onto the heel, into the perineum, toes tuck underneath, inhale, rise to flat back, and exhale, forward fold. And in very traditional shalas, one, not a lot of instruction is given, two, so I wanted to teach you three ways and options to suit your body, four, and five inhale rise to flat back exhale release this also allows you cross the ankles inhale lift or reach forward step it back to um, continue your practice day to day so traditionally inhale up with facing we would practice yoga or this ashtanga full primary six times a week yeah, you heard me. <laughs> Jani Shishasana C. Modified version, come onto tabletop and tuck the toes. Option to stay here if that's um, sufficient in stretching the fascia plantar at the plantar fascia at the, at the base of the feet and the toes. Otherwise, bum to heels, sitting up for five breaths. One, six times a week of an hour and 45 minute class. Two, sometimes is not going to work. We have our life. Three, also if we're doing other sports activities, four, we haven't slept well, our diet's changed, all these factors. And five, release, step forward. Our energy levels won't allow us to do an hour and 45 minute yoga practice every day. Chaturanga, knees, just gym. Inhale up, we're facing. But this way, with the modified versions, inhale, step or jump through. Hopefully, you will be able to begin to roll out that mat, maybe more times than not. Uh, Mary Chess and the family with a modified version that can suit your body. Bend the right knee, outer edge of the foot against outer edge in line with the outer edge of the hip, space in between the foot and the inner thigh. So we're drawing in, and I, what I want you to work on today, the modified version, would be wrapping the hands around the left foot. If you're not there yet, then you're gonna take your left hand to your shin and squeeze the knee in, and then just reach forward. Now, if you are there, you wanna go for modified bind, you're gonna take the belt behind the back, bind it between each hand and forward fold. One. So again, if you're familiar with the bind, just use your belt, see how it feels. Two, notice the openness in the left shoulder that can draw forward and square down. Three, and maybe we can forward fold over 
the left leg a little more. Four. And five. Now we'll go straight into B on this side. So I want you to lean back and lift the right foot off the floor and then tuck the left foot under and drop the foot back down. This is our modified B. One, so traditionally we would go Mary Chasana A on the left, right and then left, Vinyasa and then Mary Chasana B, right and left. But in this modified version, we're already almost in B if we just take the modified leg under four. So that's why it's nice to do it. A bit two on one side and then two on the other. And five, inhale, rise, release the belt, cross the ankles, roll forward, step back, drop the knees, chest, chin. Inhale, upward facing, and exhale, downward facing dog. Step it through, Mary Chasana A and B on the left side. Bend the left knee up, space in between the foot and the inner thigh. So if you're working on that forward fold and reaching the foot hand to foot, take the right hand to the shin. Otherwise, come into forward fold first. Left hand wraps around the knee, find the belt, and come into forward fold. One, right toes engaged. Two, try not to veer over to the right side too much. Three, four, I get asked a lot, should the left sit bone be down? And five, over time, it will start lowering down. Inhale, lift up, lift the left foot, tuck the right foot under and come back into your forward fold. If we think the legs are doing two different things, two, so they're gonna be in different positions. Three, when I first started, my sit bone on the left side was really high and over time it has begun to drop. And five, inhale, rise up. Exhale, release, cross the ankles. Keep going with these modified vinyasas. Back to plank, drop the knees, squeeze the elbows in and lower down. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Come through, we're coming into Mary Chess and the C. Lengthen the legs, bend the right knee. Right hand comes behind you. If you're finding that you're um, veering back, take a block under the hand so you can sit up nice and tall. Maybe just see what that feels like tonight for me, for all today. For me, it feels really great. Option one, elbow crease hugs into knee and take the gaze behind. Otherwise, I would say a nice modified version is taking the elbow to the outside. Getting a nice deep twist through the thoracic part of the spine where the bra strap is and also into that left shoulder. For three, let's take two more breaths, left toes drawing back towards you, four. And five, inhale, look forward. Exhale, release, bend the left knee, take the block, left hand onto block, elbow outside of knee, inhale, lift up, exhale, roll around, one. Maybe you can get a few clicks out of that spine, two. Three, four, and five. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, release, cross the ankles, roll over the knees. Step back to your plank, drop the knees, chest, chin. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog. Missing out, Mary Chasanis D. Jump it through and moving straight into boat pose, Navasana. So find this balance point on the sit bones, bend the knees, hands underneath, the backs of the knees. And if you suffer from lower back issues, take a block for support under the lower back. Good. Then we're going to take the hands to the backs of the knees, shins parallel to the ceiling and knees squeezing in. Hands can stay here or arms forward. One, maybe just see what it feels like with the block. Two, it really avoid, uh, um, alleviates that rounding in the lower back. Four, once the uh, core gets tired. Five, cross the ankles, plant the hands. Take a breath. Straight back up. One. Two. Three. So focus on the hip flexor, drawing in four. And five, exhale, come forward, plant the hands, lift the chest, and once more, one. So we're only gonna do three, traditionally we do five, four, 
and five, cross the ankles, roll over, step it back, knees, chest, chin. So now we are coming to the peak of the mountain. Exhale, downward facing dog. So the modified version for your Buji Padasana is a yogi squat, which is what we can all work on and what we all need. So you're going to walk the feet up, shoulder width distance apart and turn the toes out a little and then sink the bottom down towards the ground. If there is issues with you getting down, um, I want you to maybe, maybe take like a stairs banister if you have or the side of the sofa and hold on to it and lower yourself down. See how far you can get. Otherwise, if you can get down but the heels are lifted, take blocks under the um, under the heels and then take the hands to prayer, elbows inside the knees. Lift the chest for one, two, three, four, and five. Good, wherever you are, release the hands to the floor, step back to plank, stay for a moment, drop the knees, chest, chin. Inhale, upward facing, exhale, downward facing. Coming into Kormasana, modified. So we're gonna come through to seated for this one. Take the soles of the feet together and create a lovely deep diamond shape through the lower body. Heels are away from the groin. And then from there, forward fold, palms face up, you thread the arms underneath, forearms rest onto the floor, forward fold. One, two, three, four, five. Good, inhale, release. Supta Kormasana is when the arms come behind the back, but for this one, we will leave that out if we're just here at the moment. Good, cross the ankles, roll it through, or take them to the side, step back, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, upward facing, good. Exhale, downward facing. Step through to seated position. We're going into embryo pose, Garda Pindasana. So from here, I'd like you to keep your, um, your legs, <laughs> I forgot the name, uh, crossed instead of the half lotus thing. And see if you can take, lift, lift the knees and squeeze them in and see if you can take the outer edges of your feet with your hands and then just lean back. See if you can find the sit bone and just hover the feet off the floor. And then once you've got that, squeeze the knees together and in. Two. Now, you can still roll with this and I would recommend it. Obviously there are different um, spine, um, there are different spines. So for some people, you'll feel like you've got a really flat back and you sort of bang down. You can still do this. What you have to work on is tucking the tailbone under and then the chin to the chest. So we kind of really, uh, so not so we kind, we, so we really round. And then roll the shoulders forward on that internal rotation. And then you take a breath in. And as you exhale, squeeze the knees in. And we'll stay facing forward. Five rolls. Four. And five, good, release the knees. Kukutasana, cockerel or rooster pose is where we would be in lotus, hands pressing the floor and we lift the bum and feet. But I want you to understand the energy required for that. So I'm gonna ask you to plant your hands down underneath the shoulders, like in Dandasana, the first seated pose. And then what I want you to do is push the floor away, feel the strength through the arms, and then very gently pull up the pelvic floor and draw the lower belly in. It's as if I'm trying to send the bum back and just hover here for one, so really pull up through the lower belly, two, this is really strong for me, it should be for you, two, four, 
and five, exhale, release, good. Work through vinyasa, cross the ankles or take them to the side, step it back, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, up with facing, exhale, down with facing, step through. Baddha bound angle pose, soles of the feet together. This time, the heels of the feet are nice and tight towards the uh, glutes. Hands around the ankles or interlink the fingers around the feet. Five breaths, gaze to the floor. One, any hip injuries or niggles, knee injuries, take blocks underneath the outer edges of the thighs. Three, or to release this pressure, hands to shins or ankles, or maybe take the heels away from the groin a little. And five. So even if you don't move, we can still do Baddha Konasana B. We want to keep the length in the spine. And as you exhale, you come forward. The elbows squeeze tight towards the torso. You have a tendency to really press the chin forward. So tuck it back in, lead with the crown of the head and lengthen the back of the neck. Avoid that rounding forward. Four. Five, inhale, rise up, release the hands, walk the heels away, press the thumbs into the base of the big toe, inhale, rise up, this time deep rounding of the spine, and just tuck the chin to the chest, come into a forward fold. One, two, three, four, And five, inhale, rise to flat back, well done. Exhale, cross the ankles, roll it through. Step it back to your plank, engage the glutes, drop knees, chest, chin. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing, slide it through to your seated position. Your Vista Konasana, separate the legs nice and wide, toes draw back towards you. Any issues with the hamstrings, hips, bend the knees, and we can work on a forward fold. So a nice modified variation of this, to get into the hips a little bit more would be to bend the knees and come forward, keeping the arms straight, rise up onto the fingertips like those spider arms. One, if you feel okay, legs straight, same principle. Essentially, just don't go um, lower, just go as far as you can. And if you're really struggling here, excuse me, take a block. And when I say struggling, I mean, that your lower back is rounding and you can't come forward. Take a block, or sit on the edge and tilt the pelvis forward and just stay lifted. Three, let's do two more breaths. Four. And five, good. From here, we come into Udva, Udva Vista Konasana, where we balance on the sit bone. So the option or modification for this is Soles of the feet to the floor, hip distance apart. Wrap the elbow creases around and see if you can interlink the fingers. And then try and get the balance. Just sit back a little, lift the feet. If that's what you're working on, just stay there. If, it's what, if the, what you're working on is trying to straighten the legs, squeeze the knees, lift the feet off the floor, wrap these fingers around the big toes, and then it's like that boat pose. You're gonna extend the soles of the feet away and keep the knees bent. Eventually, you begin to lengthen, but if you're finding that you're wobbling and the legs don't wanna straighten, just keep them slightly bent and point the toes. Good. Two more. One. And two, exhale, release hands to the floor, step back, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, upward facing, exhale, downward facing. Step it through. We're gonna miss out Supta Konasana from here. And we go straight onto our back to Supta Parangustasana. Lie onto the floor, find your belt. Toes of the feet drawing back towards you, bend the right knee. Take the belt around the right side of the foot and extend the leg. So the priority here is that the right leg is straight. So if it means that you need to take more length in your belt and not have it as higher up, then go ahead. Left hand to hip. Five breaths. One, drishti, gaze to that right big toe. Two. Three. Four, 
five. Modified version, take a block to the outer edge of the right hip. And as you exhale, take it to the side, feel the support of the block against the hip, which allows you to open up a little further without the left bum cheek lifting off the floor. Gaze over the left shoulder for one. So these are practices that you can take into any yoga class too, whether the teacher says to or not for. You now know these wonderful options to suit your body. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, release. Straighten the right leg. Inhale, bend the left knee. Take the block to the outer edge of the left hip. Take the belt around the foot, right hand to right thigh. One, gaze to the left big toe. Two, what's going on with the right foot? Make sure it's engaged. Three, four and five exhale extendly rotate let that hip drop to the block take the gaze over the right shoulder for one right thumb cheek stays in line dropping on the mat three four and five inhale bring it back exhale release Good, so move everything out of the way. So the next position is when we roll back with the feet touch the floor behind us and we take the peace fingers around the big toes. If that is not accessible for your body and also for all of us today, let's just try this out. And all I want you to do is come into a rounded back forward fold and on an inhale, come to your back hands to floor rocking back and forth. And that's why I want you to work on today. If that isn't accessible either, maybe when you begin to rock back, draw the knees into your chest and just take a few rocks to get the body used to this rocking movement, the rounding of the spine. Maybe the legs can then come over and we come back up. And I would say that that would be your process. And eventually you might want to take a block to get some lift and eventually those feet will come behind you and you can stay here making sure that the chin stays locked to the chest. And that would be what I would suggest would be your practice for those final positions. If you want, if your feet are here, maybe reaching the hands towards the peace fingers and then the whole process of trying to come back up and balancing, it might be better to bend the knees and inhale, rock up and just see if you can come up with the knees bent to begin. And if you can find that sweet spot, then once you're seated, seated, lift the legs a little. So it's your options to work on, but processes to get you there. Eventually, rock back, five breaths, peace fingers around the toes. Inhale, rise up, point the toes. Five breaths, exhale, release. Good, step or jump it through. Knees, chest, chin. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing, come through, lie onto your back, modified, excuse me, just had to move my mat, modified, Uddhva Danyarasana, feet hip distance apart, heels of the feet nice and tight towards the glutes. If we've got a block, let's take the block between the thighs, just so that we're activating the inner seams of the legs, to squeeze them together, hands to floor. Inhale, Lift the pelvis, press the tailbone away from you. Lift the rib cage for one. Try and walk the shoulders towards one another. Two, three, four, and five. Exhale, release. Now, if that's too intense for you, you need something more restorative, the block comes under the bum or the sacrum, and we take more of a restorative style. Otherwise, we release the block, we come up once again. Tuck the tailbone, press the lower back down, inhale, lift the hips. This time, wiggle those shoulders towards each other, see if you can interlink the fingers. Now, to get the lift, I want you to press into the feet, think about the hips rising, rib cage rising, chest to chin for three looking up neutral position through the neck four and 
Five, exhale, release, widen the shoulders, lower the back down, take a breath in and out, one more round. Hands to the floor, palms down, inhale, tuck the tailbone, lift, wiggle the shoulders, interlink the fingers. Now try and press the little fingers down towards the floor side for two. Contract the glutes, lift rib cage, chest to chin. Three, four, and five, exhale, release. Draw the knees into the chest, hands under the feet, rock up. Cross the ankles, step it back, knees, chest, chin. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward dog. Step it through, moving into Salamba Savangasana, shoulder stand, variation, modification. Perfect if you are menstruating or um, the rocking back is not an option for you. So, Facing the length of your wall, nice and tight. Let's have the left shoulder, left hip pressing against the wall. Lie onto your back from there. And then from there, you're gonna swing the legs up. So the bum's nice and tight against the wall. And we can have the legs resting against the wall. So this is a more of a restorative style shoulder stand where we're taking the weight and pressure out of the shoulders and essentially just lifting the legs. And then you have the options to take the legs wider, working the adductors on the inside of the thigh, and also getting into the hips. So we can do our five breaths here for one, two, time to slow everything down, three, four, And five, and we'll move into one more variation here, which is like a Baddha position where the soles of the feet come together, outer edges of the feet rest on the wall, and then the knees drop wide. If that's not um, accessible for your body, you could come into a squat variation where the soles of the feet are together and the, soles, uh, and the knees are pressing towards the torso. Your choice, one, two, Three, four, five, well done. Draw the knees together, roll them to your right hand side and slowly make your way back up. One more vinyasa. Step back to your plank position, drop the knees, chest, chin. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing dog and step it through. Now, we're coming into modified Shishasana headstand practice from here. All of you can do this. It's just a practice. So we're gonna take the, um, the balance and the core out of this one. And we're just gonna work on the shoulder strength and, the, and opening through the back of the body. So to begin, take your hands around the outer edges of each arm and then release, keep the elbows where they are. So let's do that on the floor actually. Elbows down and then release, interlink the fingers. And so now you've got this lovely triangle shape through the arms. Then you're gonna rest your head to the floor and my ponytail is coming into the basket of the hands. Now, once you're here, we want to begin to um, engage through the shoulders. So I want you to think about pressing or rolling the shoulders away and pressing the forearms and elbows down. So it's active. And I can still very lightly move my head left, right, up and down. There's hardly any pressure on my head. In fact, there's no pressure on my head. Once you're there, tuck your toes and just lift the knees off of the ground. Press into the shoulders, keep that head lifted and we can take our five breaths from here. One. Two, roll the shoulders away from the ears. Three, four, five. Exhale, drop the knees, untuck the toes. Reach the arms forward, rest the forehead to the ground, child's position. Five deep breaths.
From here, very slowly walk the hands back towards you, rise up, find your way to your seated position, crossing the ankles and taking the hands behind the back, yoga mudra. Inhale, lift the chest, exhale, forward fold. Five breaths, sealing in the benefits of your practice. One. Two. Three. Four and five. Inhale, rise to seating, release the hands, index finger and thumb together. Padmasana or variation of Padmasana. We're going to take our 10 Ujjayi breaths here. Chin tucks, gaze to floor or close the eyes. Inhale. One, two, take the awareness towards the space between the eyebrows, releasing any frowning sensations, relax through the lower jaw. Working into the fifth limb of the eight limbs of yoga, Pratyahara, withdrawal of the senses. Allowing all of the external stimuli to exist around us. But without becoming distracted by it. Three more Ujjayi Release your right breathing. Take the hands to the floor either side of you. Actively press the palms into the mat. Pelvic floor draws up and in, belly button in. Ukluti variation for one. Lift the chest. Two. Three. Pelvic floor lifting, almost drawing the bum off the floor. Four. And Five, exhale, release, lie onto your back, moving into Shavasana, resting pose. <clears throat> so it has dropped in temperature where I am. So if you feel that the temperature is going to be a distraction for you as you take rest, put some more clothes on, take a blanket. Make sure your phone's on silent. And take some rest now. A few deeper breaths. Letting go of what you thought your practice was going to look like today. Maybe observing your relationship and emotional state when we're asked to slow down. And there's this wonderful thing about respecting the practice itself, not rushing through, observing positions and breath. And with this mentality and thought, this practice becomes a lifelong engagement instead of trying to achieve 
We want to practice in the body that will be sufficient for us in 10 years. Because if we push too hard or get injury, we may lose interest. And perhaps it's not sustainable for our lifetime. So learning how to modify, to recognize when we need to slow it down, take it a bit easier, is as important as being able to do a handstand or a headstand or pushing forward. We'll take the next few minutes in silence, tuning in to that body and mind. From here, begin to wiggle your fingers and toes, taking a deeper breath back into your body. Maybe stretching the arms overhead, taking that full body stretch. And when you're ready, bending the knees, rolling onto your right hand side. When you feel okay, and you feel like you wanna come back out of it, coming back to your seated position, crossing the ankles and taking your hands to prayer. Close the eyes, take a lovely deep inhale, exhale, sealing in all those benefits. And we'll close today's practice on an arm. Inhale here. Oh. Namaste. Thank you very much, well done. Day 20, who'd have thought it? Well done, I hope I've shed some light on thinking about our body and thinking about how we practice and why we practice, how we react to slowing down and hopefully how you can practice in a sustainable way depending on, as I say, um, whatever's going on with you, energy levels, emotional levels, physical ailments, injuries, tightnesses. This practice is accessible for everyone and for you in whatever stage you are in. Um, so tomorrow, it's full primary day tomorrow, no modifications. So, um, well done and come and give it a go tomorrow if you found today like that was that was enough then that's your that's your time i'm just putting my dressing gown on because i'm so cold then that's it for you that is your time well done you are amazing and keep practicing um if you want to give the full primary um the full sequence with no modifications go tomorrow is your day um other than that i think you're amazing and um and I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Bye.